Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're going to talk about how we can give guest access to users inside of SmartSuite. Well, why is this so important? I talk to clients, and they're considering different options on how to be able to give large access to a number of users that they have. So they might have their core groups of users who are going to be using SmartSuite all the time and interacting with it, working through business processes. And then oftentimes they have outside users. It might be contractors or temporary users that are coming in and coming out, and they don't want to give that same kind of full access. It could also be that they have stakeholders inside of the organization. Maybe there's a manager in a different department, and it would be helpful for them to see some of the data, but they don't really need to interact with it. They don't need to actually update records and create new records. Now, I used to work at a couple of CRM companies, and this is something that clients would come to us all the time and say, hey, you know, we understand that, that you're selling this on a per user per month kind of basis, but we've got some of these users that really just need a very limited view into things. How can you help us out? And oftentimes it was really hard for these companies to be able to provide some kind of access because they're incentivized to try to up the license counts as much as they can. Well, SmartSuite has taken a really great approach to be able to provide this kind of limited guest access to be able to suit the needs of folks who don't need the full view into SmartSuite, but they can still see records that are assigned to them, comment, and do a few other things. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what exactly we're able to do as a guest user and compare and contrast that with someone who has general access inside of the system. I'm logged in here as Greg Guest because I have guest access here, and I'm inside of a project management solution. I can head back to our main screen for the workspace here, and I will be able to see additional solutions just depending on what kind of access I have to them, if the solution creator or admin wants us to be able to see those solutions. But primarily, we're just going to be operating out of this single solution today for project management. And you'll notice that if I click on to some of the other apps like projects over here, I don't see any records. And this is because I'm able to see the records that I am assigned to. In this case, I have tasks where as Greg Guest, I am the owner and those are the tasks that I see. So I'm not going to see the tasks of other folks that are on my team and what they're working on. It's not going to be this big collaboration play, but it is going to be so I can see exactly what I need to be able to do. I'll have the ability to be able to open up a record and I can view all of the values associated with it. However, you'll notice that I can't actually click on or edit these. In this case, because I haven't been given access to the project, I can't even see the linked project itself here. But I can see any comments and activity history. I can see what's happened here. In fact, let's check out one that has a comment. Click on this record and notice that Julie General, I bet you can guess her name, General Access Julie, assigned me a comment and she asked me a question about the blocker on this. And this is where I think the real value is for these guest access users is that you can actually use the conversation feature. So it's not just that someone can tag you, but I could tag other people and leave a response to Julie. Now, this is perfect if we have folks, you know, maybe I'm an overflow worker. I'm kind of brought in to take on some additional capacity. I can't update the status of the task myself, but I can go ahead and ping Julie and say, hey, here's where I'm stuck. I'm actually done with this task. Go ahead and close it out. It takes a little bit of overhead from someone else on the inside who is a general access user to be able to manage that. But if you're talking about a scale of you know, 100 additional users, to be able to give free access is pretty incredible. So I can handle those comments. I could assign that back to Julie. The next thing that I can do is I can check out my work area where if I have those things assigned to me, here's the comment that came through. I'll be able to see that all condense in one spot just as I would as a normal user where I can see what's assigned. But again, I'm not going to be able to actually update the records themselves, but I can view it in this one spot here. Other things that I can do, I can take a look at any items that have been favorited. So I can favorite a view or I could open up a record and favorite that record. And anything that I favorite is going to show up inside of my starred items here. So if I'm working across multiple apps and solutions, it makes it easy for me to be able to find that. Same thing with the power search function over here. I can search for uh, records 
And just remember that this is going to show that subset of items that belong to you. I'm not going to be able to see other records that aren't assigned to me throughout the system. Let me close out of here and let's just pop open another record again. You'll notice if we are interacting with other users like this Julie General, we can go ahead and view their profile. And this is another collaborative workspace type environment. If I'm working with a team, especially if I'm a contractor and I don't know everybody, it's really helpful to be able to see their profile information, what's associated with them, so that I can get a better understanding of who exactly that I'm working with. Now, speaking of this Julie General, let's go ahead and contrast the access of what I'm seeing as Greg Guest with my guest access and see what a general user would see inside of the system. All right, now I've logged back in and I am Julie General. I have general access. You'll notice that I'm in the same exact project management solution and I'm looking at tasks, but I'm able to see tasks across multiple owners. So I see both Greg's and mine. I can see those projects before, whereas Greg couldn't because he wasn't actually assigned on the project. And in general, I'm going to be able to get access to different things in the system that Greg wouldn't be able to. I'll be able to create a brand new record. I will be able to edit and update existing records. So I can do everything that Greg was able to do, plus more on top of it. And the nice thing is, is that we can get even more granular with the permission. All right, I'm now logged in as a third user. This is my user account as an admin inside of the system. Notice that from this tasks view, this looks exactly the same as Julie would be able to see it, but I can go ahead and configure my permissions for this solution to be a little bit more advanced here. I could go to advanced permissions and I could say certain teams or members can only be viewers or they can only be commenters or they can only view and edit things that they've been assigned to, but they can't actually create anything new. So a general access user can actually fall into any of these. If I want to be more restrictive as an admin to give them specific access, I can also do it through this means. And we can get even more specific than that and do it at an app level or do it even down to the field level permissions, which we'll cover in another video. The last thing I want to show you is how we can go ahead and actually invite those users to our workspace. I can go ahead and click down on invite new members can invite folks by their email address. And this is where we determine if they're a general access user or if they're a guest. So in the case of Greg Guest, I invited him as a guest. In the case of Julie General, I gave her general access. And this select member type doesn't actually have anything to do with their permission set. This is just so that you can see where they exist inside of the organization. From there, you'll be able to assign those roles. And this is really handy to be able to give that guest access to folks maybe in or outside of the organization who just need a limited view of data to be able to understand what's going on inside of your organization. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'd be curious to hear how you're planning on using guest access within your organization to be able to invite more people in as collaborators. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where we're offering a free 30-minute consultation to help you get your smart suite implementation off the ground.